All right, so we're going to be working on this uh, John Deere 317 here. Um, I just think I posted a video. I can't remember. I kind of edit randomly when I want to. Sometimes I'll edit five, six videos in one night and post them, and then go two months without posting. Sometimes I'll post every week. It's just dependent on how I feel. I just really do not like editing videos. So anyways... Uh, this is a former customer's of mine. Um, he was saying it wasn't, uh, sounded like it had no compression in it. And I went out and brought my car trailer and winched it up on there. Absolutely, positively had no compression whatsoever. I mean, and this was before I took the spark plug out. I made sure that that was tight. Um, and I'll turn it over just so you can hear. I mean, obviously, again, it has no spark plug, but it sounded exactly the same earlier. So, yeah, obviously had no compression. Um, and so I guess I already see what the problem is. I took the spark plug out. Let's see if I can get you a good shot here. Where there's the hole. So if you look right there, uh, that should be the intake valve, I think. Because the intake manifold is straight above that. But, um... I'll see if I can get all this stuff set up here. It's going to be difficult. I've only got two hands. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the engine over, and you'll see that valve does not move. But if I come over to this side here, I believe that's the exhaust valve. I'm going to turn the engine over. And so you can see the exhaust valve is actually moving up and down. So I kind of assumed it had a stuck valve, and I told him that's probably what it was going to be. Um, he doesn't really want to sink too much money into this, even though it is a 317. Uh, from the little research that I did, the 317s aren't as desirable as a 318. They are essentially the exact same machine, um, but the 318s more commonly have an Onan horizontal uh, kind of a boxer engine, basically. And those are a lot more reliable. And these are a uh, oil bath kind of pickup splash design. Um, and as far as I'm aware, there's no oil shutoff on this thing. So if you have a rough yard, which this guy does, and say you're driving around and you park at a hill and you leave it at an idle, it might not be getting oil to the bearings. You know, it's, it's kind of one of those things. Um, truthfully, you shouldn't leave any engine running on a slant regardless of what it is but it's pretty easy to forget with a riding mower like this because of course you if you're mowing your lawn you might constantly be getting off the thing putting it in park letting it run quick grabbing the stick out of the way and then hopping back on the thing so even if that only takes you 10 seconds to do you know you say you figure you do that 10 times every time you mow your lawn that's almost two minutes at minimum of the engine basically running without oil and you figure you do that, oh, I don't know, 10 or 15 times a year. So basically, he, this was all kind of hearsay from what he was telling me and just off forums of what guys were saying. Um, I'm sure they are still reliable engines. It's just that's kind of why he didn't want to spend a lot of money on this. So um, I don't know. The machine's kind of in rough shape, too. I mean, the tin and the hood and all that's good, but... Uh, this tire over here is completely shot, so that needs a tube. I tried filling it with air. It leaks air out as fast as it takes it in. Um, it's just tires completely shot. Uh, seat's pretty cracked up. I mean, it doesn't look it, but the plastic is so hard here that as soon as I actually sat down on the thing, it ripped right here. So it could use a new seat. Um... Whatever these tail lights are, they have sitting on the back here. The plastic's broken on that. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's a, it's still a good unit. It's just more so how much money are you going to put into an old thing like this, you know, before it doesn't come become cost-effective, basically. Um, so, anyways, uh, I am going to go ahead and pull this heat shielding off here and see if I can get the cylinder head pulled. Um... I did shove a screwdriver down in the hole, and the valve does move back pretty easily. There's some resistance there, so in theory I could just 
shoot some oil down in the cylinder and kind of hope it works its way through but i'm just it's so easy to pull the cylinder head off this thing i think that's just the route i'm gonna go um you know the guy just wants to resell this thing anyways he's got i think four of these john deers ranging anything from like an older vintage one to i think he's got like a four something which is a pretty heavy duty one it's more like a commercial lawnmower and then he's got an actual john deere tractor that he paid like Forty thousand for it's like a 2018 or something and it's got a snow blower and a lower or a loader attachment and all that stuff so he doesn't really he's not going to be keeping this for himself he just wants it to run so he can sell it and do whatever with it so anyways enough rambling on here i'm gonna go ahead and start to get the cylinder head pulled and see if i can kind of get that valve lubed up and get it to work its way loose all right, so I got this side almost completely off for this heat shield, but uh, I mean, this goes to show how little I actually know about these 317s. This looks like it is a horizontal engine as well. Again, I was just basing that off of what the guy told me. Um, I only saw the one spark plug wire coming off, which was this one here and went over to this cylinder, but I can clearly see there's another spark plug wire over there, as well as the fact that the intake manifold is still tight and snug down um, and if you follow the runner it obviously goes over to that side too so um, there could be something on the other side that's hung up as well for sure this valve is hung up there's no doubting that um, but I'm gonna take the hood off here just so it's a little bit easier to work on because I mean I think I'm gonna have you know this front tin the hood the heat shield that side tin everything off and we're going to be looking at the motor and nothing else so i can actually get clearance to everything here all right got the hood off that was extremely easy but can anyone tell me why it seems like this is only specific to john deere that they use the bolts with the shortest head imaginable because you know i've got here it's a 7 16 deep and i'm going to push it on to where it's nice and tight and I'll twist it, and every fucking time, the thing pops off. No matter how loose or tight it is. Again, that broke it loose, but it popped off. Broke it loose, but it popped off. Broke it loose, but it popped off. And that one didn't. And that one did too. I don't know why the hell, like, on these ones, they actually use bolts that have a little bit of meat on the head. But on all these fucking little tin retaining things, they use absolutely just the shortest head bolts imaginable. Or rather, I should say, head studs. Well, I guess it'd be head bolts, but... I don't mean head bolts like on a cylinder head. I mean specifically... I'll get one off here so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Like, look at how fucking shallow that thing is. That should be twice that thick. And it's only, I've only ever had the problem on John Deere's. I've never had the problem working on like Craftsman mowers or what else? Husqvarna, things like that. You know, I'd rather, I hate these things so much. I would rather have Torx bits on a 30 year old tractor that has fricking been sitting outside all its life. Well, I got the heat shields off. Uh, this side, there was one bolt hidden right kind of down on the bottom down here. Um, trying to see where that would have threaded into. I'm not sure. Anyways, there's one bolt hidden there. Um, I figured I'd take both sides off in case it was two cylinders that had no compression. There's a bit of an uh-oh here. Again, let me see if I can do some handy work with the camera and the light to get it just the right angle. Come on, let's see. Can't even see the valve on that one. Okay, so you can see that valve moving. Let's get you over to this side damn screen has to shut off on the camera you know
Okay, so both valves are moving on this side, yet there is no compression. So that could either be the valves aren't seating all the way, could be a hole in the piston, could be the piston's not moving, could be a bad head gasket, could be a bunch of different things. But regardless, that's why I took both heat shields off both sides and got the whole thing torn down because I needed to find out definitively if both cylinders had compression and so on. Um, the other problem here with this heat shield on this side, um, there is one hidden bolt that's basically between the frame rail and there's so much shit you got to reach around. I just bent it out of the way. It's very easily going to bend back up and get bolted on. But that's, I don't know, it just wasn't thought through when they were putting that bolt in, I guess. So, um, I'm going to start right here with this side cylinder head since I already have the intake off. I still got to take the uh, heat shield off here to get the exhaust manifold off of the cylinder head. And uh, I'll bring you back when I get that off. Alright, got the cylinder head off here. Um, I just got the intake lift it up i actually don't even know why the hell i took that off for whatever reason i thought the cylinder head was going to be affixed to the intake and exhaust but then i remembered it's under head valve but i already had it off whatever um anyway so here you can better see what i'm talking about where the exhaust valve or sorry the intake valve is hung up um i just had my little screwdriver here so i'm going to tap this in and right now the exhaust valve actually is open a little bit, so let me crank it over. It's another freaking problem I'm having. Just started with the starter. Not wanting to engage. Let's see if soaking it down with that does anything. Usually it just gets gunked up from crap collecting in there. trying ah this freaking thing it's being a pill all right so i'm gonna hold this here with one hand turn it over with the other see if i can get some lubricant on the back of that thing all right all right now that I've got the starter actually consist consistently engaging Let's see if I can get this over to okay so right there it's a top dead cell or top dead center so no cylinder should be open. Grab my screwdriver again. I'm just gonna gently tap this back in. Okay, and so there you can see it's pretty much seated where it needs to be. And if I turn it over, how it opens up and then stays open. So pretty much all I can do is keep, I'm gonna grab my uh, rubber mallet and just tap the thing in and spray some sea foam in there and just consistently basically soak the thing because uh, it's only reason it's being hung up is the same reason that the starters hung up just from gunk being on the valves all right so a quick little update here um i did i think i mentioned already that i found what the problem was um it was the intake valve right here that appeared to be sticking but upon further inspection it's not the actual valve that's sticking it's the cam push rod or something internal with the cam with the push rod whatever i don't know specifically what um that's the actual mechanism that's sticking and over here i didn't take the cover off or anything but i could see both valves moving obviously one of them isn't closing enough um kind of called the customer and told him that the only way I could really pinpoint actually what this thing needed for work um, I noticed there are some bolts right here and the block actually splits down the middle 
And that's about the only way that I can see of actually either fixing what's wrong with this motor or being able to pinpoint exactly what's wrong with it and giving him kind of a quote of what it would cost to do that. Um, he said he would rather try to find a different motor instead of rebuilding this one. And I kind of told him I don't really advise doing that because he's talking about buying a brand new motor from Kohler or whatever and spending, you know, $2,000 on a motor. And I, I kind of told him the mower's just not... Like, yeah, it's worth 2000 but it's not worth paying me, you know, $100, $200 to pull the motor and put that motor in and get it all modified so it actually would work. Plus, you know, had to put a tire on the thing the other day. Um, so that's another $50. And he didn't get this thing for free. So I kind of told him, you know, if, if he has any intentions of selling it, his best bet would be to try to fix what's wrong with this one. Um, and he kind of kept saying, no, 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 we're just going to put a different motor in it. Um, so basically to satisfy my curiosity and not only that, but also to try to further convince him that it's worth rebuilding this one. Um, this motor, you know, is this, essentially to him, it's completely junk. He says he doesn't really care what I do with it. Um, I'm going to probably take the engine out and split the block and, yeah, it's probably going to be two hours of work or so, but, you know, like I said, that's the only way. I've tried spraying carb cleaner and uh, WD-40 and deep creep and PB blaster and using a heat gun and warming it up and everything under the sun. And the thing, it's just got just enough um, tension to not want to pull back. And that could be something, someone had a theory that I'd spoken to about this. Um, they had said that it could have been that the motor got uh, really hot. And that is a possibility, although I didn't see anything on the cylinder walls, you know, for scoring or anything. Um, but anyways, he's not, he doesn't have any interest in fixing up this motor, but I figure I'll pull it out, tear it apart, See if I can find if it's an easy fix, and if it is, just do the easy fix, put it back together, and set it down the road. Because um, I have no interest in this thing taking up space in my already small garage for a month or two while he's waiting to try to find a motor. He hasn't bought one yet, he's trying to find a used one. But um, obviously I wouldn't want him to buy a new motor and then fix it and then say, well, tough shit, so I'm going to, you know, if I... Pull it apart, give him an update, tell him, look, I think it's just best that we fix it and try to convince him. And if he still says absolutely not, then I'll have to go with what he says. But it's kind of one of those things he's not mechanically inclined enough to know it's worth fixing what's wrong with this motor. He'd rather one of those people, if something breaks, he'll just replace it. But anyways, it's been a few days. Haven't heard back from him. So like I said, I'm going to I'm actually going to pick some of this stuff up here. All right, it, it took every ounce of strength I had. And I mean, if it had been two pounds heavier, I would not have been able to lift it out of there. Um, it was pretty simple. I took the intake manifold off just to get the coil off. Um, and also to kind of get myself... I didn't have to take the intake manifold off. I, I just haven't pulled this engine before, so I wasn't sure where the bolts were going to be to actually pull it out. There were two up front here, and then two in the rear, and then that U-joint right here was just a slip yoke design. It didn't have any sort of roll pin or fastener or anything holding it in. Um, but I had to grab at the front, and then lift, 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 and then keep lifting, and then while holding all the weight on the front, try to pull it backwards a little bit to get it to slide out of that yoke. And I did, and then I set it over here on the chair, and squatted down and lifted with all my might and got it up here. Um, so it's going to sit right here for uh, at least a couple days. Um, I have to get that lady's car in here and get a radiator put in that. Like I said, it's a should be a simple job, but it's not. It's a 2001 or 2000 Volkswagen Beetle or Bug, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you have to pull the entire front clip off just to get the radiator out, and I already did that, but it's been 
about a week and a half since I ordered the parts. And now I have to try to remember where all the bolts went and put it back, put it back together for her. But, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm just going to pick up all the parts, pick up all my tools, slap it up on the shelf there, and bring you guys back once I uh, actually get a spot on the table there, whether I use that table, clean that off, or use that workbench. I still got to do a tiny little bit of cleaning here and there, but uh, like I said, I'll bring it back once we actually start tearing into it. Um, I've been trying to figure out, like, shelving-wise... These white cabinets just do not cut it, and I built a little shelf over there to kind of put electronics and miscellaneous things on. Um, I'd like some shelving put in there so I can actually, right behind that jack is all the parts for this guy's Subaru engine. Those have been there for almost two months. Um, you know, trying to find heads and waiting on the machine shop and whatever, so I've been tripping over them. And the way I kind of store things, I've got bolts, like, sitting, you know, in this little cam gear here and if i'm walking over to grab a funnel or something i knock it over then i got to put all the bolts back and i'm just tired of tripping over it but as you can tell i have absolutely nowhere to put the stuff um sure you could put it in the back of the car but not every customer's car is spotless and if it is spotless then you don't want to be putting oily parts in there so it's kind of one of those things i my best bet would be to get some shelving that can hold like 500 pounds a shelf or something put it in there and kind of designate a shelf to a customer um then of course that leaves the predicament of where do i put all this stuff but that can be figured out uh the other thing i'd like is right over here um there's a lot of wasted space on this workbench and i would like one of those they make a like 24 drawer 96 inch um workbench toolboxes so they've got, you know, 24 different size drawers. Um, well, some of them are different sizes. And then it's got a steel or a wood workbench top. And just with all this dead space under here, this is just kind of... I tucked this stuff under here because I didn't want to haul it to the back. But pretty much everything here is scrap steel. Everything there is blankets, towels, tarps, whatever. All that can be put up on a shelf. And so, you know, again, it's just wasted space. The majority of my tools would probably end up in this thing because then I could actually be working on the tool box, bench, whatever you want to call it, and then uh, just grab a tool when I need it. So I don't know. I I can't justify they want $1,200 for new, you know, for the cheapest I could find, plus like 200 for shipping and a few hundred for fees and taxes and whatever. I've seen them at auctions, but they never go for less than 1000 and you still pay fees there. So... I don't know. I I might I might just have to bite the bullet. Kind of the same thing with shelving. Um always goes for cheap at the auction till the last minute and then the guys just have to go ape shit and pay more than what they would if they were to go to Home Depot and buy it. So anyways, uh enough rambling. That's just kind of before I get this torn down, um I'd like to kind of have a clean spot to work on and uh just get the shop picked up overall and get it tidied up so that way I don't, you know, I don't want to have three projects torn apart because that is exactly what it is right now. I have the Subaru plus this John Deere plus another guy is bringing me his Subaru today to do head gaskets on. Actually, plus all this welding mess over here from doing exhaust work. Um, so, you know, before I delve any further into any job, I want to get some shelving but i want to be cheap and get a good deal on it but i kind of need it now i don't know we'll see maybe i'll get lucky all right it's been a few days so i can't really remember what i had mentioned with this um i know i had mentioned it had a hung up intake valve and uh was waiting to try to convince the customer to allow me to pull this engine apart and fix it he looked around and we couldn't really find this engine anywhere. Um, not even the replacement 18 horsepower Onins or anything like that. So he said, go ahead and tear this one apart. Um, otherwise, I did build some shelving here uh, around the garage to try to give myself as much space as possible. Um, the guy who lived here before... Uh, kind of had all these shitty little shelves like this one right here 
um, and they were just mismatched sizes, different heights, randomly placed around. And then he had like just a nail in every single stud just to snag you on the shirt or poke your eye out or whatever. And I know they were all for hanging tools, but uh, anyways, I got it pretty well sorted out here. Um, kind of have a spot over here for my engine hoist and when the engine's not in the engine stand, it'd probably get tucked over there. But, uh, so, like I said, I spent probably two, well, two days, not including the days waiting, um, for the lumberyard to open. I ran out there on, I think it was Thursday, something like that, built, um, this shelf over here, and, uh, was kind of cleaning up as I was going, and then... Friday, I think I realized I needed more lumber around, uh, like, 4.30, and I said, all right, we'll head out there Saturday. Called them Saturday. They weren't open. So, uh, I just went out and got enough lumber to build these other shelving pieces here, and this upper shelving, um, you can kind of see, I just wrote on there with some yellow, uh, wax marker, wax pen, whatever you want to call it, um, just kind of what the contents are. But the uh, main reason I ended up doing this was because this engine here had uh, plenty of parts that were taken up. Basically where this black US General rolling tool cart is, um, plus all the way over to this engine hoist. I mean, pretty much this entire little corner was just shit I would trip over all the time. And anytime I wanted to go get something, I'd be knocking pieces everywhere, tripping over it, whatever. Um, and the main reason I built shelving was to actually be able to get multiple jobs in at once. So all this stuff here is for that engine. Um, and <clears throat> of course, once I get this engine pulled out of this John Deere, um, I have to actually do another job immediately after this that's higher priority. So I'm just going to right now quickly pull the engine, lift it up put it on this shelf and then I can get the uh, other car in that I need to put a radiator in and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I'll try to get some footage of actually pulling it here. We'll see. Um, the other thing I should, I'm trying not to ramble here, but I mean, a lot of shit has happened in the last couple days. Um, I actually had probably four or five videos that I had planned to release um on my laptop and i had them all stored on there my laptop of course started getting a little bit slow because the only real hobby i have up here other than mechanics is uh pc gaming and basically my laptop just wasn't cutting it anymore there's you know i have some downtime here and there and uh my laptop wasn't cutting it so i built a gaming desktop and uh anyways basically I have the videos stored on that laptop, however, I took out the SSD that had the operating system on it, put it into my desktop because the SSD that they had shipped me was dead on arrival. Well, I can't boot up that laptop to move my files over unless I get a new SSD to put into the desktop and move the old SSD back to the laptop. and. So it's a big fucking headache, um, but hopefully I'll be able to pump out videos a little bit faster. Uh, that laptop really was not meant for anything other than basic small games and kind of here and there. Um, for those wondering, it's an Acer Nitro 5 gaming laptop, and it, it did its job, but the one that I have now is going to be much, much, much better at actually processing and exporting and editing videos and not going to bottleneck with the freaking processor and, uh, the, uh, I don't know if the video card has much to do with actually processing and edi editing videos, but whatever. So anyways, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and get this motor pulled out here and quit rambling and, uh, hopefully I can bring you back once I actually can get this up onto a table and kind of get it torn down.